Hi, boys and girls. Mrs. Jocko here to take us to the rainforest today in our writing and science assignments for this week. You will notice that those two assignments are combined because they go hand in hand. For science, you will be doing some online research of two animals that live in the rainforest. And once you have selected two animals and have done your research, you will then um, take some notes and compare and contrast those two animals. So I wanted to hop on today to give you a little mini lesson on how to go about doing this assignment. So when considering animals that live in the rainforest, there are literally millions that you can choose from. Rainforests are home to over half of the world's plant and animal species. So I have a list here of just a few of the different animals you could find in the rainforest. We have electric eels that live in rivers, jaguars, piranhas, orangutans, capybaras. Those are really cool, like large, giant um, guinea pig animals. We have toucans, tortoises, which are really large turtles, tree frogs, tree kangaroos, ant eaters, giant pandas, lemurs, harpy eagles, howler monkeys, beetles, boa constrictors, and many other kinds of snakes, Malayan sun bears, which are a really unique type of bear, and then okapis, which are pretty cool. They are kind of a mix between a giraffe and a zebra and a horse. Um, those are really interesting um, endangered creatures. There are some other rainforest animals on this list that I found. Some are different. We've got um, tamarins, which are types of monkeys, king vultures, Tasmanian devil. We've got um, the Amazon river dolphin, which is really cool to learn about, chimpanzees. Um, we have Bengal tigers in the rainforest. Quetzals are really pretty birds that have extremely long tail feathers. We've got, oops um bats that live in the rainforest um, macaws many many kinds of birds and insects that live in the rainforest chameleons are pretty cool creatures so i encourage you to just do a quick little google search or um, on any search engine type in rainforest animals and check out a couple different websites that come up and I'm sure you will come across a different type of animal, maybe one that you've never heard of before um, that lives in the rainforest. Once you have two animals selected, um, you're going to want to start taking some notes. And here are some requirements for the writing. So we need to choose two rainforest animals, although I encourage you to read about many different animals and then pick two that you find to be most interesting to write about. You're going to research and read facts about each animal, and you're going to look for at least three similarities and three differences between the two animals that you choose. That way you can write a really strong paragraph on both similarities and differences. And then the writing part is, of course, your two paragraphs comparing and contrasting the animals of your choice. Things to consider when researching. Um, so this is just some things to keep in mind and maybe to help you narrow down what kind of facts you should be looking for. And as you are researching, I suggest to write your facts down on a piece of notebook paper or in a writing notebook if you've started one, um, or even typing some things out on the computer just to help keep things organized and so you can remember the facts that you found. If you're able, you could even print out the articles that you're reading and highlight important facts right on the page. So some things to consider are the food. You know, what does the animal eat? Where does it get its food? Some animals in the rainforest are carnivores. They eat only meat and they're hunters. Some animals are herbivores. They eat only plants and berries and fruit. And some animals are a mix of both. We call those omnivores because they might eat insects and eggs from other animals, but yet they might also eat plants and fruit as well. Think about the habitat. Where does each animal live? What part of the rainforest? We know these animals live in the rainforest and rainforests only occupy a very small portion of our earth. 
And when we think about where these animals live, um, obviously in the rainforest, but maybe think of what continent they live on, like South America, maybe in the Amazon rainforest, maybe they live on the island of Madagascar, but also what part of the rainforest. Some animals will live on the forest floor. Those will be our larger animals like the Bengal tiger, jaguars, anteaters. Some animals live in the understory, which is the next layer in the rainforest. That's where we see a lot of vines and fallen trees and branches, and it's very dark. So we have animals like snakes in that area, um, lots of insects down in the understory. Maybe your animal, um, lives in the canopy, which is the treetops. Um, those animals, you know, rely on a lot of the, the leaves and the fruits that grow on the trees. So we see a lot of their birds and monkeys, a lot of snakes up in that area. And then some animals live in a layer beyond the canopy, and that is the emergent layer. And that's those animals that can fly. So we've got like the harpy eagles and vultures, even butterflies can go up into that upper layer. And so consider finding out where does your animal live in the rainforest? Maybe it would be a similarity between two animals that you pick, or maybe it will be a difference. Also consider physical characteristics, which means what does the animal look like? Does it have fur, wings, a long tail? What are some special body features? Or maybe it has special markings on its body. Um, so think about what your animal looks like. This can include the size of the animal, how much the animal weighs, the color of the animal, and, you know, like I said, any special features that it might have. This could, again, become a similarity between two animals that you choose, or maybe even a difference. And then also think of survival skills. With so many animals living together in the rainforest, how does the animal survive? Maybe your animal is a hunter and it needs to be very quiet and sneaky. And so big, large cats like jaguars and tigers have those soft pads on their feet to help them sneak up on their prey. That would be a survival skill. Does your animal camouflage? Maybe it has special markings or colors that allow it to blend in with its surroundings. Is your animal nocturnal? That means it is awake at night and sleeps during the day. That could be a survival skill because at night, many other creatures are sleeping. It's dark, so it might help it to sneak around. Does your animal live in large groups? Animals that are social and live together in groups, that often is a survival tactic because they can help warn each other when danger is nearby and they can protect one another. So these are just some suggestions of the types of facts to consider when you are researching your rainforest animals. And again, I would write down some facts um, in a notebook or something. It doesn't have to be complete sentences, just some um, notes that you can refer back to. Once you have all of your facts collected, you need to kind of organize them into your similarities and differences. So I'm using a Venn diagram, which we have seen before, which is an organizational tool to compare and contrast. Now I'm going to use toucans and sloths as my animal examples, mostly because those are the two animals that we gave you some facts for at the bottom of your assignment sheet. So if you are unable to use the internet and research on your own, you can refer to your assignment sheet and there are some provided facts on toucans and sloths. And so from reading those facts, you will be able to organize um, the details into either similarities or differences between those two animals. Now I'm not going to read the facts to you here on the video um, just for sake of time, but I will share with you the similarities and differences I came up with based on my research and my reading. And I'm gonna start with similarities. Both sloths and toucans, um, obviously they live in the rainforest, but they're both found in South America, specifically in the Amazon rainforest. So I'm just going to put that as a fact, um, a similarity here. 
I'm just kind of making some space and room for my other ones. Now, of course, I'm going to expand on this a little bit whenever I write my paragraph, but I just need to jot some notes down on my organizer. Another similarity between toucans and sloths is that they live in the treetops. And the treetops would be the canopy of the rainforest. Canopy is kind of like an umbrella that um, blocks out the sunlight from the bottom layers of the rainforest because in the jungle, the trees are so close together and the treetops all kind of bunch and intertwine. And so it's hard for sunlight and even rainfall to make it through the canopy. All right, so we've got, they both live in South America. They live in the treetops or the canopy of the rainforest. And another similarity that I found is that they both use camouflage of some sort. Um, toucans have those large colorful bills that help them to actually blend in with the colorful plants, flowers and fruits um, that they uh, live with in the treetops. And then sloths, because they're so slow moving, algae actually grows on their fur. And the algae is kind of like a greenish brownish color. And it doesn't hurt the sloth, but it just helps the sloth actually to blend in with the, the bark of the tree, the branches and the leaves that surround it. And it really helps to keep the sloth camouflaged in its environment. So those would be my similarities for toucans and sloths. Now I need to go to my differences. So for toucans, they are covered in black feathers for the most part. Um, there might be some other colorings within their feathers, um, but typically their bodies are black. It is the bills of the toucan that are very colorful. Now sloths are more of a like grayish brown color. Um, and they have fur instead of feathers. I guess grayish isn't quite a word. So we'll just say a gray brown fur, whereas toucans have black feathers. Another difference is the colorful bill that I talked about um, with toucans. Sloths don't have a bill. They um, are kind of identified based on their toes, on their front feet, whether they are two-toed sloths or three-toed, okay, so two or three-toed. Um, toucans, they have wings, so that means they can fly. Um, sloths don't have wings, so they just climb, but they are also um, good swimmers. That is an interesting fact. Whenever they do feel that they are in danger, if they can drop down into water, they will because they are very good swimmers. Their front arms are actually much longer than their back feet. And so if they fall on the ground and there's no water nearby, they literally have to try to scoop themselves with their front feet, which is not a very um, good defense when you're a slow moving creature. Um, and then another difference that I had come up with is that Sloths, they spend about 90% of their time um, hanging upside down. That's kind of neat because most creatures can't hang upside down for very long periods of time. Um, if you've ever hung upside down from the monkey bars, you feel like all the blood rushing to your head and, you know, it kind of feels like your head's going to explode. Um, but sloths are able to hang from tree branches upside down for a very long period of time. Whereas toucans, they need to stand upright. They don't hang upside down. Um, they have to, they roost on the branches and they are upright. They are very large birds. And when you think of those very large bills that they have, um, you know, their bills actually don't weigh a whole lot, but it would be very hard for them to hang upside down with those big bills. They would get in the way. So I have a good bit of details here, I think, some differences and similarities between my two animals. So now I would be at the point where I'm ready to draft my paragraphs. Now, just for sake of time, I already wrote my paragraphs, but I do wanna share them with you and go over some details whenever we are writing. We need to remember to indent the first 
sentence of each new paragraph. So I'm just showing arrows here that I did indent at the beginning of each paragraph. And then whenever you are writing your first sentence, you need to make it a topic sentence to introduce what it is you are writing about. So you should mention the names of the two animals in your very first sentence. Now you can write about how the animals are similar first, or you can contrast the animals. It doesn't matter um, which paragraph you start with. I chose to talk about how they are similar. So here's my topic sentence. Did you know that sloths and toucans can both be found in tropical rainforest? Hmm. So I kind of pose this as a question to help capture the attention of my readers. So you can either write a question to introduce your paragraph or you could simply make a statement. Here's what I said using my details on my Venn diagram. In fact, both creatures are found in the rainforest of South America, primarily the Amazon rainforest. Also, sloths and toucans spend most of the, their lives in the treetops. This part of the rainforest is called the canopy. In addition, these two creatures use camouflage to hide from their predators. Since sloths move so slowly, they have a greenish algae that grows on their fur. This helps them blend in with the leaves in the treetops. Toucan's bills are very colorful, which allows them to camouflage with the colorful South American plants. So in this first paragraph, let's talk about the transition words. In fact is a transitional phrase that leads into my first example. And then I also use the word both. When I use the word both, that's a very good indication that I'm giving a similarity. Whoops, let's see if I can... Oh, that's not good. All right, we'll just leave it yellow. Um, so when I say both, it's an indication that I'm giving a similarity. I'm comparing two things. Also is a transition word that's leading into my next fact. And I use both again because I'm talking about how they are similar. In addition is a transitional phrase that is leading into my next fact. And I said these two creatures. So that's uh, stating a similarity between both. And then um, I explain their camouflage. Um, and so you want to make sure you're adding some extra details in whenever you're giving your similarities and also your differences. You want to expand and explain a little bit. You want to elaborate some. And then when you move into your second paragraph, you do need to start with another topic sentence because the idea of this paragraph is going to be different than the idea of your first. And so I decided to say, despite their similarities, toucans and sloths are very different. So I started by saying, you know, rather than being the same, they are also different. And here are my examples. Sloths are covered in fur that is usually grayish brown in color. Toucans, however, are covered in feathers that are mostly black. Also, toucans have a large colorful beak, but sloths do not. Sloths have either two or three toes on their front feet. Another difference is that sloths spend about 90% of their day hanging upside down. Toucans need to stand right side up when in the treetops. Otherwise, they might get a headache. There are many interesting animals in the rainforest that are similar yet very different, just like toucans and sloths. So let's look at some words I use to indicate I am contrasting these two animals. I said the word however, so it's kind of like one or the other. Um, I used also as a transition word to lead into my next fact and saying like words do not and but indicate you're contrasting two things. And then I gave another difference. So that tells us we are contrasting two things together. And you also need to end with a, an ending sentence or a concluding sentence. So I said, there are many interesting animals in the rainforest that are similar yet very different, just like toucans and sloths. So you want to find a way to kind of pull both paragraphs together to give a recap of what you were writing about 
and I was writing about the similarities and differences of toucans and sloths. And so as you finish up your writing, remember to always go back and read over what you wrote. As I was doing that, I realized I had some mistakes in there that I needed to fix up spelling wise, or I just typed the wrong word. Check your capitalization at the beginning of each sentence. Check for correct punctuation at the end. Double check that you indented each paragraph and that you included a topic sentence for each paragraph. You may also want to do a few additional activities that are optional. Um, you could illustrate a picture of each animal in its habitat, um, drawing a picture or even using your computer skills and searching for pictures on the internet and adding them into maybe Microsoft Word and creating a cover page for your writing piece. So you could have a little bit of fun with that. Um, there are certainly many, many videos and books that you could read on the rainforest. And I encourage you to, to do that, to research some other parts of the rainforest. I'll be including some other facts in some of my other videos in the weeks to come just to help teach about the rainforest. But I do find it to be such a fascinating topic to learn about. And I wish we were in school together so that we can share some of this information that we learn about different animals with one another. If you have any questions at all or are needing some help finding facts on some rainforest animals, please reach out to your teacher. We will be more than happy to assist you and guide you along the way. We hope that you are doing well. Keep up the great work and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.